السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, all his companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and may he bless every single one of us and our offspring to come up to the last day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and grant us every form of peace. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the question asked in the Quran is a very important question. If we look at Surah Al-An'am, verse number 81, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after drawing an example of two types of people asks a question. And this question is directly related to peace. Which of the two groups are more deserving of peace? If only you know. Which are these two groups? One, those who associate in partners with Allah. The other, those who stayed the furthest away from partnership with Allah, those who followed the example of the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, whom Allah has made mention of in verse number 79 of Surah Al-An'am, where Allah says, he was the one who made a statement that we use up to this day. What did Ibrahim alayhi salam say? وَجَّهْتُ وَجَهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ He says, indeed, I have faced my face to the one, meaning I have directed myself and my acts of worship to the one who has created the skies and the earth, the one I have directed my face to him in all purity, in the most pristine form, him alone. And I am not from amongst those who shall associate even a speck as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah loves this so much that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was referred to as the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he made this declaration openly and he made it his business to abstain from anything, even from a distance, that had something to do with association of partnership with Allah, to the degree that his father disowned him, his people disowned him, his community kicked him out, they tried to burn him in the fire. You know of the miracles that happened at the time. The peace was granted to him, even though he was cast into the fire. Amazing. So what was this peace? We are searching for peace. This peace was by the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the fact that he worshipped Allah alone and none with Allah, none besides Allah. May Allah grant us peace. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, who is more deserving of peace? Those who engage in polytheism of any sort or those who abstain and stay far away from it? Those who render acts of worship solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in verse number 82, the response comes. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنِ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those who believe and they have not spoiled their belief with any form of association of partnership in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ones who are in total peace, both in this world as well as in the hereafter. And Allah says, and they are the ones who are rightly guided. May Allah grant us peace. As we are searching for more pearls of peace, we find a very, very important example also in Surah Al-An'am, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about laughing at those who are calling out to gods besides Allah. You find people calling out to sticks and stones. Some people call out to a to a little bit of food, may Allah protect us, really. Like Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, we used to make idols out of tamr, out of dates, he says, and I'm sure you would know this. And he says, we used to ask that idol a lot of things, including food. And when the food did not come, we ate the idol. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. 
This is Umar ibn Khattab talking. And we learn a great lesson because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that no matter how silly people's behavior is, when they are worshipping something, don't laugh at them. Why? Because although it might make you laugh sometimes what people do, but they may laugh at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or joke about him or scoff at what is right out of enmity and hatred. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this would have been a result of your action. So be careful. From this we learn a pearl of peace. And that is, like we've said before, think of the reaction of the actions of people before you actually act. So it might seem easy for you to do something, but the reaction of it might be so huge that you, don't, you won't be able to handle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. So he says, verse number 108, وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ And do not swear those or joke about those. In fact, here, sub, sabbun is actually to swear. Do not swear those who are calling out to gods besides Allah, lest they swear at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of enmity without knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then we are taught something very, very interesting. Two types of sin. Sometimes with us, we are abstaining from apparent sin. But deep down inside, there are hidden sins that we've engaged in and we continue engaging in. And that is what is snatching away our peace. So sometimes you have a person, mashallah, they've dressed appropriately. They are in the masjid. They try to read the Quran. They engage in whatever else they can. But they are hooked onto pornography. So no one knows about it besides them. Perhaps they are committing adultery in secret. Perhaps they are hooked onto some other bad habits in secret. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us, telling us obviously that if you'd like holistic peace, you need to make sure that you've abstained from two types of sins, those which are apparent and those which are hidden. Fight your nafs, fight your desires and make sure that you have given up that which people may not be able to see right now, but it will result in the snatching away of your peace and your serenity, your contentment. May Allah protect us all. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Beautifully put in verse number 120 of Surah Al-An'am. Quit the sins, both those that are apparent and those that are hidden. Cleanse yourself in both ways. May Allah strengthen us in a way that we can quit both types of sin. My brothers and sisters, let us try and work as hard as we can on that which we can work on easily first. And let's build in such a way that by the time we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will have earned his pleasure because he will have witnessed us quitting things one by one solely for his sake. If it was earning his displeasure, we were from amongst those who quit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and be pleased with us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something very interesting. Verse number 160 of Surah Al-An'am. Do you know to do a good deed is not as difficult as to preserve the deed. So a person who will lose lots of peace and comfort is one who's done a lot of good deeds, but he harms this one, he backbites this one, he oppresses that one, he cheats that one, he has murdered this one, perhaps he did this against that one. So when it comes to the rights of fellow human beings, he or she was very, very weak, very bad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us both in the Quran as well as through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He warns us and he tells us how a bankrupt person is he who comes on the day of judgment with a lot of good deeds. Salah, that is prayer and the charities and so many other good deeds. But his good deeds will be spent. They will be given in payment to those whom he has wronged. Those whom he spread rumor about, those whom he deceived and cheated and ate the wealth of and did this and did that until he is left with nothing and there are still people asking for justice. Then their sins will be taken and placed onto his shoulders. May Allah protect us. What a loss. What a loss of peace on that particular day. So Allah says beautifully, verse number 160 of Surah Al-An'am, he who comes on the day of judgment with good with a good deed shall have it multiplied tenfold. Why is it multiplied tenfold? Because you came on the day of judgment and your deed was still intact. 
which means today we read salah. My brothers and sisters, it is 10 times more difficult to protect that salah from being given as a payment to someone whom we have wronged or cheated or spread rumor about and so on. May Allah protect us. So many times we do good deeds, but it's a waste because we are giving them in payment to other people. Why should we do that? This is why if you preserve it, you deserve multiplication of the deed tenfold and even more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can multiply it even more than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Now I want to spend a few moments to read to you the list of prohibitions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of in verse number 151 of Surah Al-An'am together with the next two verses. And these verses are in such a beautiful way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Qul, tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ta'alaw, come. Tell them to come. Atlu ma harrama rabbukum alaykum. Let me recite to you that which your Rabb has made prohibited upon you. Look at how beautifully it's worded. Subhanallah. Why? If you engage in these things, it will snatch away your peace. Both in this world as well as on the day that you will need it most. The day that we need the peace. May Allah greet us with peace on that particular day. So, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being instructed to tell the people to come. So that he can recite to them the list of things that are prohibited. There are many other things that are prohibited. But in this particular place, there is a list. Let us whip through it quickly and look at every single item. If we are to engage in these things, it will definitely result in loss of peace. Either today, tomorrow, or even in the life after death. May Allah protect us. The first one. Allah tushriku bihi shay'a. Don't ever involve in association of partnership with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa bil walidayni ihsana. Make sure that you are kind to your parents. Wa la taqtulu awladakum min imlaq. Do not kill your children because of poverty. Because you are poor and you think, now let me just bury this child alive. Let me abort this child. Let me do this. Let me do that. Just because of poverty, that is totally prohibited. May Allah protect us. Then, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الْفَوَاحِشِ Don't even come close to immorality. This is what Allah is saying. So when we engage in our actions and deeds, we should do them in a moral manner, in a manner that is acceptable in the eyes of Allah. Immorality is unacceptable. Then Allah says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُ nafs," And do not murder. Murder is prohibited in Islam. Obviously prohibited. Suicide is also absolutely prohibited in the Sharia. We need to understand it. It's made mention of in more than one place in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. Then Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لَلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِيهِ أَحْسَنْ Don't eat the wealth of orphans. Except if you have spent on their behalf and you'd like to take what you have spent for them from their wealth, then you may do so. But do not eat the wealth of orphans. And what is included in this is the women whom we continue cheating when it comes to inheritance. May Allah protect us. If we do that, our peace shall be snatched away. And this is why the next part Allah says, When you are weighing and when you are dealing in business, make sure you are upright. When you weigh for people, weigh it proper. Don't have your weight such that when you put the veggies on or when you put the fruit on, you see it shows one kilo, but in reality it's 950 grams. You're stealing 50 grams from every kilo. Allah says, that is the fire of hell that you have consumed. May Allah protect us. This is why we say, the businessmen and those who engage in business, the buyer and the seller, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَإِن صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَا بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا If the two of them are going to be honest and they are going to be clear about the commodity that is being bought and sold here, then barakah and blessings shall descend upon them regarding that particular deal of theirs. But, وَإِن كَذَبَ وَكَتَمَا مُحِقَتْ بَرَكَةُ بَيْعِهِمَا Imagine, if they are going to cheat in such a way that they are deceiving one another or one is deceiving the other, whereby they are hiding a fault or doing something underhand or whatever else in a clandestine way, then the barakah and the blessings of that deal are snatched away. So make sure when we are dealing, be open. Even if your profit margin has to be less, we need to be 
really earning the pleasure of Allah so that we can achieve the blessings. And this is why one of the major sins for your information is to lie about your cost price. Really, it is one of the major sins when a person says, Wallahi, I bought this for 20 rands and I'm only selling it for 21 rands. I'm making one rand on you. And you know that you bought it for 15. Why did you lie? That statement is a, will result in the snatching away of the blessings from the wealth that you are about to make. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. If you want, tell them, look, the cost price is none of your business. Pay it or you may leave. Allahu Akbar. Maybe you wouldn't like to be that rude, but inshallah. Inshallah, you may think of another way of trying to lure the customer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correct us and rectify us, make us people who are not rude and make us people who can really be polite. Something's just come to my mind. You know, when we have commodities and stock and so on, and we like people to come to our shops and so on, wallahi, we are so kind to people around. We go out with flyers and we want to advertise and we are so kind to anyone who walks in and shows interest in the bigger items as well. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. What is going on? And so on. Would you like some tea? And would you like to come back for coffee? And so on. Why? Because we want to sell a commodity. Brothers and sisters, the deen is more important. So be kind to your fellow brothers and sisters. They may take a thing away from you regarding the deen, which will result in your paradise, which is far more valuable than the little deal that you struck. And you were ready to be so kind to a person who gave you a little bit of wealth in terms of business in the world, which you're going to eat, consume, and live in the world in this dunya. Whereas we could not be kind to one another as human beings to achieve the peace of the dunya and the akhirah. Allahu Akbar. So this is why we say everything you do is a deal. Ya ayyuhal amanu hal adunlukum ala tijara. O you who believe, can I show you a business? What is the business? To do good deeds. That's the business. We are doing good deeds. We need to be kind to one another. Adopt Allah's commands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and open our doors and grant us goodness. And this is why if you continue on that list, Allah says, Al-Adl fil qawl. You need to make sure that when you utter your words, you must be upright. Do not lie. When you lie, your peace is snatched away. They say to protect one lie, you need to tell a thousand more. Do you know that? So when you lie, someone says, where were you? Give you an example. Someone sent me a WhatsApp message a few days ago saying that there were two people who happened to become lazy regarding the examination they had and they delayed. And when they got to the school the next day, they got to the headmaster and they told him, you know what? We had gone to such and such a place to help someone and on the way back there was a flat tire on the car and you know what? We really had struggled. We pushed the car for so many kilometers. We were so tired and we could not get up the following morning and that's why we were so delayed and we couldn't come for the examination but we were really keen on writing it. Headmaster says, no problem. The two of you should sit separate. Or oh, I think there were four of them. I don't even know. So you should sit separately, all four of you and you will have your question paper, no problem. And the headmaster prepared for them only two questions. First question, what is your name? Two marks. Second question, which tire was flat? 98 marks. <laughs> 98 marks. Allahu Akbar. The moral of the story is because you lie, you fail. Do you see? So this is why we say when a person wants to lie, Everything is snatched away. Their peace is snatched away. They fail their exams in the dunya and the akhirah. No point in telling a lie, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us truthful people. Do you know that those who are truthful, they achieve so much peace and comfort, not only in this world, but in the akhirah to the degree that they earn similar ranks to the pious and the martyrs and so on. And they are mentioned in one sentence in the Quran together with the prophets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us truthful. So then we have something else also connected to truthfulness where Allah says, fulfill your covenant, fulfill your promises, your promise to Allah. We've spoken about this a few days ago. And then at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this indeed is the straight path, the straight path. So follow it correctly and do not follow the little paths on the side for indeed they will lead you astray. So people are calling you towards goodness, understand the goodness and follow the path. 
But if there are people calling you towards fulfilling, fulfilling whims and fancies in that particular case, yes, we may achieve temporary pleasure, but once that temporary pleasure is over, there will be permanent doom unless we engage in repentance. May Allah forgive us and may He grant us steadfastness. Let's move to the next surah, a beautiful surah, Surah Al-A'raf, where in the opening verses, something very important is made mention of, I would imagine it is a pearl of peace. Today, my brothers and sisters, we have the Quran in our hands. MashaAllah, thank Allah for that. Some of us, we are a little bit shy of calling people towards the Quran. So we don't like to warn people to say, look, the Quran says this, and I'm warning you, or in a polite way, in a perhaps a better way, you might want to choose a beautiful way of conveying the message, but some of us are too shy to convey the message of the Quran to the non-Muslims, and even sometimes to the Muslims. And some of us feel this, na'udhu billah, Allah safeguard us, this book, yes, we know, we adopt it and so on. But you know what? Just take it easy. Leave it on the side. Let these people do what they are doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Allah tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahu Akbar. This is a powerful verse. Kitabun unzila ilayka fala yakun fi sadrika harajum min litunthira bihi wa dhikra lil muttaqeen. This book has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, let there be no distress in your heart to, to warn by it and for it to act as a reminder to those who are conscious of Allah or to those who believe. To those who believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us belief and may He make us true in that belief of ours. So this is why don't be shy to read the Quran, to understand it, to convey its message. Because do you know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose intercession we are so, so desperately seeking on the day of judgment. He says, Khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa allamahu. The best from amongst you are those who learn the Quran in all the aspects of learning of the Quran and teach the Quran. May Allah make us from amongst those. Imagine, he is telling you the best from amongst you, those who do this job. Why don't we do that job? Allahu Akbar. Today, if I were to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that you know what? If you are to qualify in one year from this university, you'll be able to get a job where you're going to earn 150,000 US dollars a month. Did you hear the Allahu Akbar just now? MashaAllah. 150,000, that's about 1.5 million rands at today's rate of 998. We know what the rates are, mashallah. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, let me inform you, we would all go for that. You study for one year, you work for a few hours a day, and you're a multi-millionaire. They call them tycoons. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. A tycoon in no time. But when we are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the best are those who learn the Quran and teach it, guess what? We've never even read the Quran ourselves once and we're about to die. Look at that. This is why we struggle without peace. Because he says the best are those who learn it and teach it. Okay, I might not have taught it, but have I learned it? Allahu Akbar. That's the first step. May Allah protect us. So let's remember, this is the book of Allah. We've read Harry Potter's and we've read Barry Potter's as well. The books that are there and the books that are not there. We've already read them and fantasized them as well. But come to the real book of Allah, the word of the creator of entire creation. We haven't yet attempted to try and learn it. That's why we don't have peace. That's why we don't have peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace and may he make us people who can become serious about his book. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in that way and then we need to be careful of the devil and the plot of shaitan. Do you know his promise? Allah makes mention of it. The reason why we say it, if we fall to the plot of the devil, we will lose our peace. He says, Verse number 17 of Surah Al-A'raf. The devil says, I will attack man from in front, from behind, from the right and from the left. I will attack him. I'm going out for him. This is why we have said, Shaitan is your enemy. Consider him an enemy. Be on the lookout for him. 
he comes to you in a beautiful way and tries to beautify things that in actual fact are not beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those whom who consider what is really beautiful as beautiful and who can recognize and realize that which is not. And this is why Allah warns us to say, look at how Adam, your father, the first of your type and kind that was created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at how he lost a certain place in paradise because of the deceit of the devil. And watch out, let him not cheat you in the same way. Do not let the devil test you in the same way that he tested your forefather, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, which resulted in his removal from that paradise that he was in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not take away the goodness that we are in. From this we learn that when we follow the devil, all the goodness that Allah has put us into, he will take us out of that at some point. Did you hear that? If Allah took away the goodness that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was created in because of some error that had happened, even though he engaged in tawbah, and then obviously he was sent onto the earth with us when we are in goodness and we want to follow the devil, definitely that goodness will be snatched away because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has taught us that if you follow the devil, then you will lose all the goodness that you have. May Allah grant us goodness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of something very important. You see the clothing we are wearing today? MashaAllah. Who gave it to us? It's Allah. He gave it to us so beautiful, it covers our private parts. And it covers us in a way that really we become people who are spiritual. This is why Allah warns us regarding clothing. Dress not only appropriately, but properly. May Allah grant us goodness. And may He make us such that whenever we come to the house of Allah, we take pride in our dress because we are coming to the house of Allah. Imagine. The house of your maker. Today, if you had to go to the house of a top businessman, multi-millionaire or top politician, what would we do? We'd make sure we have a bath. We'd make sure we are wearing good clothing. We'd make sure we have proper perfume. And we'd make sure that we are looking decent. And we look in all the mirrors before we get there. And we make sure last minute everything is okay. You know, we put out everything straight and nice. Mashallah, this must be straight. That must be straight. My pen must be in order. My watch must be in order. My schooners, my shoes must be fine. Mashallah, everything should be okay. May Allah protect us and grant us goodness. Brothers and sisters, what about the house of Allah? We pitch up really to the house of Allah and we don't even know what we're wearing. Wallahi. And, and we don't even take pride in it. So Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, khudhu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. Verse number 31 of Surah Al-A'raf. O oh, children of Adam, take pride in your dress when it comes to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kulu wa shrabu. And eat and drink. Wa la tusrifu. Do not waste. When you are wasteful, your peace is snatched away. Why? Because you become extravagant. You are setting a trend. So wastefulness is also from the devil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is why Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, qad anzalna alaykum libasan yuwari sawatikum warisha wa libasu attaqwa thalika khayr. O oh, children of Adam, we have sent down to you beautiful clothing. We have sent down to you beautiful clothing in order that you may cover your private parts and beautify yourselves. But remember, the clothing of piety is indeed better for you. This has two meanings. One is, when you wear your clothing, make sure there are clothings of piety. The clothing is that of goodness. Not only does it cover you, but properly. You know, if it's too tight, it's not correct. It will result in some form of downfall. We always say... When people do not dress appropriately, Wallahi, my mothers and sisters, you end up paying for it. Why do we want to do that? Imagine, you end up paying for it. So just dress appropriately, properly. He who is attracted to you because you showed perhaps your legs or your shape, those legs are not going to look like that for the rest of your life, nor are you going to be maintaining that shape after you've delivered two children. So therefore, it's better for you not to, to do that, to realize that he who is attracted to your heart and your, your goodness and your character and your deen is the one whom no matter what you look like, he will love you and adore you and 60 years down the line, he'll tell you, honey, you're the one. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. It's a reality. 
We are losing track because we want to dress with tight clothing. We want to do this. We want to undress and attract people. And the day you don't have hair anymore, they don't want to look at you. Why? Because I was attracted to that hair that was really, you know, blowing in the wind. Where is that gone? Well, Allahu Akbar. I'm now a Muslim and I want to be really obedient to Allah and put on my scarf. My sister, did you wait for you to become bald before you put on your headscarf? Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us inner peace and out to peace may he make us dress in such a way that those spouses that are the best for us are the ones who are attracted to us Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar my brothers and sisters what powerful words may Allah grant us goodness so remember when you dress appropriately yes it will attract the right people to you your company will be correct when you want to dress inappropriately the same clique of people who have that type of life will be your company may Allah protect us grant both the men and the women goodness today the women yes we speak about them but the men are as guilty that we have now developed what is called very sadly half bummers they're halfway down your backside and really you see people coming to the masjid for Jumu'ah and they engage in sujood and we're standing behind and we just don't know what to do. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, it's happening, my brothers and sisters. So let's not only address the women folk when it comes to dress code, but the men, remember, tight clothing prohibited for men also. Did you know that? And you are supposed to be dressing properly, appropriately. May Allah grant us goodness. Let's move a little bit further. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. In fact, there is one point I did not yet make mention of, and that is if you are to be a person who is conscious of Allah, then even if your clothing is slightly tatty and so on, believe me, you will have honor and dignity in the eyes of people. When you are upright and your character is beautiful and amazing, remember, one is to wear clothing that people can see in terms of the cloth that you are putting on. And two is your character. Your character beautifies you, even if your clothing is not that beautiful. And your character can actually drop you and make you the ugliest person on earth whom nobody wants to talk to, even if you're the don according to the dress code that you have. Yes, believe me, you might have something really put on that is state of the art, maybe perhaps designer of this nature or that. But if your character stinks, believe me, people will have to block their noses as they walk past. May Allah protect us. My brothers and sisters, there is a lot that we will say. Inshallah, we'll leave it for tomorrow until we meet then again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Kanashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.